something that was particularly uh, a connecting tissue between this, this piece and the next is trying to read a text at face value. Sometimes it seems very clear and evident that it's uh, to be interpreted in one way. It's to be interpreted as a curse. Um, and in this next presentation, um, Judith Joseph will, will describe to us how a curse can actually be seen as a blessing and how we can really flip the narrative by allowing ourselves to dig into text. Um, Judith Joseph, unfortunately, would like to be here, but wouldn't, wasn't able to be, attend. But mm -hmm. she, is, uh, she has sent along a statement that I will uh, say in her honor as her uh, shaliach. But before we get to that, I'd like to introduce uh, both Judith Joseph and Rav Baruch Taylor. Judith Joseph is a Chicago-based artist whose work is exhibited internationally. She works across media, chiefly woodblock prints, painting, and installation. In addition to her contemporary work, she creates Hebrew calligraphic works specializing in the ketubah. Her work is inspired by nature, stories, and Jewish ideas. She is a published illustrator and is currently working on a children's picture book with her colleague, Dr. Jane Shapiro. She teaches artists Beit Midrash courses. And Rav Baruch Taylor, for those who weren't in the first session. I okay. think I'll, I'll just um, concur with Rabbi Saskar that uh, we assume <laughs> everyone was here. Okay. Just, uh, just, uh, just to uh, modify, I'm not farming anymore. <laughs> oh. since covid the last couple of years though i still have the farming cap so <laughs> um perhaps uh, i'll start with uh, her statement just to go through the slides that she she presented um and she she walks us through her process in making this really intricate and magnificent piece Parshat Mitzorah deals with how to purify a person who has a skin disease like leprosy. You have to separate them from the community. They go through some restorative rituals in order to be cured and made kind of kosher to be included in the group again. My thoughts about it had to do with the stigma of having a visible disease. It does isolate you. It's a cruel punishment really for the individual suffering with illness. Even we have illnesses that are invisible. We feel isolated and lonely and separate from the community. For me, the Amen Institute Chavruta and presentation coincided with the decline and death of my mother. Rather than withdraw from the residency, I decided to make a painting as an homage to my mother, who was deeply involved in and supportive of my art from earliest childhood on. This this is my favorite picture of my mother and I from 1976. She was 50 and I was 20. As my Amen Institute articulation approached, my mother was entering her final days on this earth. She passed away at the age of 93, just a week before I was scheduled to present. This is a photo of my parents from 2018 at an exhibit of my work. My mother was a creative needlewoman. She loved color. In fact, she loved life. She created exquisitely crafted quilts, knitted afghans and sweaters and needlepoints. She had a talent for interior design and created a beautiful home more than anything she loved her family with which was her greatest creation. So I decided to use vivid color. I included Proverbs 31, Sefer Mishle, the famous phrases about a woman of valor. The woman of valor, the woman of valor phrases, phrases describe a woman who makes beautiful things with her hands, is energetic and dynamic, I laid my dying mother's image on the cushion of these comforting words. Above her are the white feathers and droplets of purifying blood described in the Parsha, also the healing herbs. I drew her as she was, 
I wanted to look the mystery of death in the eye as my mother was not one to sugarcoat things. I asked myself, what is the point of making art if it isn't true? I painted the truth of her death with tears streaming down my face. I shared the painting with my father and siblings before I showed it publicly, and they approved. Those are her statements. Nice. Wow, that's, that's really intense. And it's just bringing me back to that period of time when we were um, collaborating. And... Um, and indeed, it was this, it, it, we felt process and, and how I propose it was to, to have to be delving into this very parsha that's dealing with, with how we deal with this heaviness of the passing of life. My apology. Yeah. And um, in fact, she, we, they were separate art, art pieces, as you noticed before, they should hire separate. And, um, and um, even like what's on the upper left areas of, of the whiteness, that was added later as Judith was going through her bereavement and Shiva process, um, she was um, adding more of this motion of release and purification, uh, of taking the heaviness of death and beginning to celebrate her mother's life. And that is exactly what we discussed too. How, why, for example, in, in the process of the coin was to take a living bird, two birds, one was to be to be brought to death, yet the other bird was to be released for life. So that she's certainly captured here. And also the mixture of colors. There's the whiteness. There's the whiteness of the, of the leper, her himself, taking blood, you know, the, under the skin, you know, the, the, it becomes pale, or even a whiteness spot on the skin surface. So too, the Kohen uh, symbolically takes both the Shni Tolat, the red string and the blood, and mixes it with Mayim Chayim, living water, and prepares them, and uh, does the purification process. So that again is an, a, a form of alchemy, taking that which is, um, which uh, carries all the polluted elements uh, that we carry, and being able to release what we can and transform whatever we can too. And it, Mamish, uh, there's, uh, it, it, this really resonated uh, too with, uh, in, uh, in my personal life also in certain, in, in certain ways where I've been going through difficulties and um, just being with Judith at the same time and being, so it was. It was also an emotional and chavrusa um, in a way, and it was a real opportunity to to witness this process going through. And in fact, um, I, the, the, to connect it all to Parsha Bereshit, as uh, as Rabbi Yitzchak began, um, I saw an interesting gematria that the word Hametzora, the leper, this is the same gematria as the word Tohu, which is four eleven. Meaning that it's, 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 and just like God also took from the chaos and created such a beautiful uh, universe, so too we can take even the leprosy, that which is nega, nun gimel ayin, and try, just take the same material and just reassemble it and put the ayin at the beginning and becomes onek, bliss, pleasure, as the, the Sefi Yitzira says. And that too is the work of the artist, of course, as we said before. And also resonates with uh, previous, um, uh, uh, what, Siona, I don't know if she's still on, with her art from Balotcha, where, she, uh, where that was the take of the, um, the, the malady of, uh, of, of Mitzora, 
in a more gendered way. And she really beautifully expressed it that way. And that really resonated, especially with what's happening now in Iran with, uh, with the women's protests, uh, those that are constrained. They're, they're not able to reveal them to their true selves and going through that and being able to, to express what we really, who we really are. And that in a way is what the Mitzvah is doing too. And through the aid of the Kohen, the Kohen again, being the, the, the agent of transformation and assisting that. And that's what the artist is too, in a way. You know, like, like we were talking before, that if, if the Beit HaMikdash is the beautiful museum, so sort of immersive museum, so then uh, the Kohens are the artists, of course. And, uh, and the art is, it was, you know, in, in both, in, in both mm -hmm. hands-on, ritual, uh, ritually, and, and even internally. Uh, so all being able to take that impurity and transforming it into the, the holy. So, um, so thank you again for this amazing uh, process. And hopefully we go on to next year seeing this all in a new, whole new way, right? Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Rav Baruch. And similarly to the magic that you just uh, performed in front of our own eyes, where you brought back a conversation from four, uh, four conversations ago, bringing Siona into the four and bringing the voice of the Isha Kushit, where actually in your presentation, you came to a beautiful revelation where the healing mechanism for the Mitsora is through the Tsipor. And mm -hmm. the healing mechanism perhaps for Miriam is also through Tsipora. Um, that bring interweaving these conversations intertextually and even in this own com in this own presentation that we have today, going back earlier, is exactly the magic that is about to be performed before your own eyes. 